Well, I hope you can see this, but uh, we're doing a white pine clear cut on this section <clears throat> and some good sized ones in here. There's some smaller ones in here, but I'm just basically cutting it in strips. And this is gonna be a big one to mess around with here with the machine. I'll try and show you guys this. If I can even handle it. I'll let go of it otherwise they'll throw this machine around. This is a pretty good sized tree here. It's uh, too heavy for the knives to hold on to so I gotta grab up farther to where I can get around it better. Get it up off the ground. Stuff like this I usually usually save it for the chainsaw. It's just too hard to handle, it takes up too much time. Close. I didn't think so. It's just too big. Yeah, slow process. See, I got it up like that so that the branches ain't dragging in the ground create more resistance Probably should have left it stand, but I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this. Because I can't pick it up to cut it. I've got to take and leave the head down on it and kind of run it along while it's on the ground. slip out and these are real hard to do them like this. Well, it's close. Lost my spot there. Yeah, I get at this at a different angle. It slipped out so it started to not read it like it should. Cut a 12 out of it. I feel that I hit the ground just now when I dropped that. I'll have to do the 
same with because it's still just too dang big. Well, I delimit some first so I can run up on it a lot easier. This one here is going to have to be an 8.8. It's got a swoop to it. getting easier to hold on to. I can get another 12 out of it. Realistically, I shouldn't even be cutting something like this, I guess. But, eh, it looks short. I have to run it back through again. This one I'm going to have to eyeball. Must be good enough. Separating the logs, the bolts, and the pulp from each other so it's easier for the skitter man to pick up. Last two sticks was pulp. Now, all the rest of them here, <coughs> since that one's gone, be a lot easier to handle. So I'm going to start a new vid since that one's done with. big ones like this I always drop my head down to the ground so when they're swinging and they hit the ground <clears throat> I don't get jolted because it'll throw this thing around and book you right out of the seat don't feel good it does not feel good when you get thrown around in here you jolt your back pretty good It says 9.9, but I know it ain't. So it went over that hump there. I'm gonna cut that off so it's straight again. We can get a hopefully get a 
another bolt out of it, but I don't think we're gonna. It looks like it's gonna be all pulp now. It's just a crooked tree. started this patch last week on Thursday cut 75 cord out of here in one day and then Friday I worked a half a day roughly and cut about 34 cord something like that and then <laughs> Monday we were going to come out and put new seals in the cylinder on the skidder and one of the cylinders for the boom because it's been dripping like crazy so tore that apart come to find out that where the two see if I can explain it to you here where the top boom and the bottom boom goes together on the top there's a scissors piece and there's pins that go through and there's a bar that runs between the two pieces for strength well from when that boom broke before it must have twisted put a hairline break in that bar that was there and from using it since then we didn't know it was broken but from using it now since then it split it in three different places and found that when we took that cylinder off so we were super, super lucky to be called around and the last one, the guy we get a lot of our Belmet parts from, he sold it that day. But remember in that he took the old boom off of that machine back when the swing broke on it and he still had the crane and all the parts up there yet so we routed the parts off of it fixed it yesterday and instead of rebuilding the cylinder we put the other cylinder on off that old crane and now we are going to I guess basically rebuild the old cylinder and leave it on the back burner for when we need it again later. So we got parts ready to go when we need it because parts are getting hard to get a hold of. I don't know how it is for everybody else, but it's getting tough. It is getting tough, that's a fact. Seems like everything's getting tough. Doesn't matter what a person's doing. As far as Ponzi parts go, we can get those pretty readily available yet, so that's a good thing. Nice to get a Ponzi skitter, upgrade a little bit, but use what you got, it's paid for, and we definitely ain't taking out loans for equipment because it ain't worth it this day and age, because the guy just don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring. Although it would be nice, just keep going. Let's see, no 12 out of that one, so get 8.8. Eight. It's too big for a 10. You can only go down to 14 inches for 10s, and this is this is an inch over bark, so it's 16. still crooked here so I can't get a 10 even out of it still now that it would be 14 now it's too crooked for anything but pulp cruise over here
with this by the pole. Trying to keep everything organized because on this job there's an unbelievable amount of sorts. And he's only got that single bunk, so it's a lot of screwing around for him to be sorting everything at the landing. And I can make more production than he can pick up, so I'll just spend my time here. Making everything easy for him. It's the way it should be. This I can get a bolt out of. That's pulp. setting these up so he can drive right down the road so there's enough room between him and the wood on each side he can just pick from each side he can go down pick up all the bolts in one skid go down pick up all the logs in one skid go down pick all the randoms up would be 10s 12s 16s you know he can pick up all the pulp or whatever however he wants to do it whatever he feels like doing he can do it easier Looks like I might be able to get something decent out of it here. Probably a 16. Yeah, I can get a 16 out of that one. It's a good looking log. Let's see, can I get a 12? No. Well, I can get a 10. Another 10, yep. That's Paul, it's too crooked. I'll just pulp all the rest of it, because that's it's not worth throwing in for a bolt. out of that but I can do a log and another log and another one I can do a 10. I guess I'll do a bolt. And the rest is pulp. little guys gotta go no 
those will just be pulp, but it looks like they're dead anyways. Yep, they're definitely dead. And I'd say the reason that they're dead is because they didn't get no sunlight from the big ones around them. That is why you have to thin a forest. If the trees don't get light, they won't grow. be the first one to tell you also that I'm not the fastest operator I move around a lot but I'm consistent and I'll put a lot of wood on the ground at the end of the day stuff like this here it's cake cake cutting. It's the best wood I've ever cut. So, it puts a big smile on my face when I start seeing all the numbers add up on here. Like this here, it's your volumes. I don't know if you can see it, but this is your volumes. And 45 is about one load. These are in cubics, so you gotta convert cubics over so you would divide 30 which it is right now divided by 3.6 and I'll tell you what I got so far since I started cutting today which I got out here late because Valerie had a doctor's appointment but regardless I'll cut a fair amount of wood by the end of the day but the most I had ever cut was like 118 it's about the best day I ever had before and I got into this patch can't remember what the number was but it was in the 200s and I couldn't believe it so it wasn't working very hard I was just cutting wood like I normally do and boy was it adding up boy was it adding up good That was over in that hole right there, but it's super brushy over there too, but it's just nice wood. This is real nice stuff. There's a lot more of it yet to cut, so we just got to get to it. Problem is, this is like driving on top of moss right now, so this is winter ground only in here. You gotta freeze it down in order to get into some of the spots otherwise you ain't getting into them I'll tell you that right now you will not be getting into them at all I'm not doing a 12 out of that one it's too crooked 10 zippy still crooked for a 10 but I'll cut a log out of it
seven loads come off this landing already. With all the hand cutting I was doing out here, while the head was broke on this guy. That added up pretty good because I cut all the trees all along the whole road with well I pushed them with the machine and if you watch the videos I pushed them with the machine and then I cut everything with a chainsaw just so that I get production keep the production going while we were broke down yet. seven loads come off of here and there's still a lot of wood yet we got this stuff here separated from that stuff over there because half of this is an MFL and half of it's not an MFL and MFL is managed forest law which would be through the DNR so you gotta they make you cut such and such amount of your woods you have it in rolled in an MFL every so often however many years or whatever and part of it was in an MFL and part of it wasn't but he wants all the trees gone and you got to keep them separate so the totals can be paid correctly this one here should make something decent like I can get a 16 out of that. I better not. There's a hump there I can see. Go back to a 12. is going to be pulled. Throw it over here. Too dang crooked. Take this chunk off of here because it's crooked. To straighten it out to make a bolt out of it. No, it seems like a waste of wood, but you're getting a better product. It's not going for paper, then it can at least go for lumber. Puts more money in everybody's pockets when you can make the most out of everything that you have and I don't waste a whole heck of a lot of wood even with hardwood I'm sitting there constantly I cut every piece out that is worth the time and effort of doing probably shouldn't I cut a lot more out than a lot of other people do I can tell you that so I've seen how much other people cut out of wood and they don't they don't do as much as me we can go down to three inches on a lot of stuff and I'll take it down to that because we've been getting a lot of pulp contracts lately and well it's kind of nice to get rid of the pulp and keep those contracts filled because if you don't fill your contracts you know what they're gonna do I'm not gonna give you as many because they figure you ain't producing enough wood everybody happy keep everything full get the most out of everything you can these trees are pretty nice because it's all either logs bolts and then it's a few sticks of pulp at the top and literally wood all the way to the very top of the tree
most would take that stick right there and throw the top, but take another stick out of it here. It ain't worth wasting it. A little bit adds up. Unless it's a really lemmy and hairy top, then I'll let it lay. But if it's an easy stick, I'll take it. guess back to like the MFL or whatever I was talking about people enlist their land in MFLs to save on taxes because it'll put you in a different tax bracket taxes will be cheaper substantially cheaper anyways especially if you got lots and lots of land and this job we're on this guy has got lots and lots of land he's got a cranberry marsh and he's got hundreds upon hundreds of acres here the one mfl we were cutting is like 87 and the other one is like 94 and we got all of his private too that he wants to cut So there's no way we're going to get this job all done this winter. We're going to have to come back again next winter and work on it. And then we got a jack pine job literally like three or four miles up the road. It's 20 something acres of jack pine we got to cut. But that's winter only too. That's real wet in there. The winters we have nowadays. You don't get a lot of frost in the ground anymore. So you only get a couple months to work. It's hard to get a lot of jobs done. We got enough winter sales right now to last us for quite a few years. So we're constantly getting calls for people wanting their woods cut. We need the most is summer sales we gotta find a place to go during breakup too so we can keep hauling wood otherwise we'll be sitting and I don't want to be sitting breakups when they post the roads for springtime thaw or whatever so the roads don't get ruined by all the heavy trucks put a weight limit on them and if we can get a breakup job it's on a highway and it's dry we can work there and break up we have a few, but they're small. We'll probably knock them out in a couple days, but then what do you do? Then you gotta try and find another place to go to. And basically paying to move. The revolving door of paying to move. So you ain't making no money because you're paying money to continuously move equipment. And I'll move this one over here because it's gonna be a 10. Another 10 out of this one I can get. This 
one won't make a stick out of the top. She's done broken. get some more tens out of this one this one seems fairly straight till I get it run out well no yep enjoy these videos or not hopefully you do I can make more of them running the harvester or whatever I guess uh, so whatever you guys want I suppose considering I'm in here doing this stuff I won't have a lot of hand cutting videos because I can basically do everything with the machine right now no problem so might get boring on this channel for a while so so you know, unless you want more harvester videos, you have to let me know. for a stick on that one. Alright, so we got this double here. I'm going to leave that yet. Get that from a different angle. Get all these out of here first. open because I got to turn around and I got to face this way. in there. Something was holding me up from the measuring wheel grabbing onto the wood and measuring. be a stick in there stuck holding it inwards. I guess I'm going to have to go investigate. Well, 
Well, my assumption of there being a stick stuck in there was 100% correct. Um, there's a stick sitting in there pushing against the measuring wheel, keeping it from rolling along the log. It's happened to me before. It don't happen too often, but when it does, I kind of got an idea of what happens. There's many other things that could happen also that will cause those symptoms, but that's the most obvious one. done so many dang things to this machine I tell you I could be a tech or a mechanic at Ponzi don't know everything about them but know quite a bit as far as working on them wise. Especially this guy. I think I'm sinking over here. Yeah, I absolutely am. Well, I'm gonna have to find a different hole to sit in. to move over and face a different direction and get out of that spot. I thought it would make a 12 but when it fell here it rolled and I can see it's shaped like a banana so now it's just going to be a log trucks here to get some wood it looks like looks like he's going to the other landing he'll probably go over there and pick up and then he'll come over here and finish off the load because whatever he's making probably ain't gonna make a load over there I don't know if I was thinking if it's just a low spot here or what but I was sinking and it's a sinking feeling ah anyways over here so I can face that way and take that double out I guess this is just gonna be a log
a lot of time if they're iffy if they're gonna be logs or bolts or whatever if they look like they're gonna make something I'll make it and if they don't you can always throw it in for pulp so we ain't losing nothing ever end here this is to the north here if I keep heading north it gets wet down there because it gets closer to the cranberry beds and it all runs downhill there was standing water down there earlier this year right where we'd be driving the machines so I don't know Right now I'm running east because at least that looks like it's uphill. We'll be getting into some hardwood back in there too quite a bit of hardwood growing throughout. That one's kind of crooked, but if I take this chunk out of it, lumber and not a piece of paper. couple more out of here. Shoot them off this way over in this hole out of the way. And then I'll face that way and get that double out of here. Sucker straight in front of us there.
that'll make a nice 10. those doubles. to it and see where it turns into a double so I know where I can cut it at all right going too. I guess I cut through that one a little bit. It's alright.
it over here and get moved over again so I can start making another windrow of wood here. I reckon though I'm going to get off of here and just keep on plugging away. If you guys want more videos like this let me know.